Hi there, Randy Green here. Let us continue with part two, where we are concluding this little sequence uh, of understanding some of the startup processes uh, as part of the toolkit, because the toolkit depends on your type of genetics. Clearly, it depends on how far can you push it. And not everybody is equipped to push it far, but we all have roles to play. We're all part of a very large pattern of change. But to be able to really change the world, we need to understand the complexity of this reality field. And that's why I'm talking about all of these horrible stuff, because typically when you go in and you become a social entrepreneur, yes, you have the ideology of you want to change the world, you want to help other people, you want to help um, the poor people somewhere or give water to, to a community in Africa or what have you. You want to, you want to change something. And then I think that's, uh, or not think, this is why I advise you to go in and look at some of, uh, for instance, on Coursera.org, you'll find a lot of uh, podcasts or MOOCs uh, and, and courses on being a social entrepreneur. And you hear many of them have got uh, case stories from people who have actually tried and what they have experienced uh, in different parts of the world, where they were the, the, the flaws or the, the faults and the, the trial and error and what they have done and what they thought and what it actually was and the difficulty of it and all the challenges they had with it. And that's part of also being a change maker that you, you go into the project not thinking that, yeah, I'm going to change the world because I'm the best person ever. And you don't go into the, these projects changing. I'm going to change the world because I've gone through so many horrible stuff. So I'm going to do this kind of transfer that I might not change my own things, but I can change others and then I'll make it a better place. And then you'll just discover in both cases that this, this is so much more complex. And that's why we need to look at when we talk about the toolkit. One of the most important things in the toolkit is both the psychological, the skill set, which I talked about, but in the toolkit, it's also a, a skill set that we're dealing with here. But that's the first toolkit. You need to look at your toolbox and say, you, you need to, to look at who are you? What are you? What do you have to offer? Where do you differ? And what can you put into this, this project of change? And to that, you need to know who and what you are completely. You can't just go in because you have an ideology or you have a fix, a kind of a fixation on or, or some kind of, of idea that you can make a humongous change because you will discover that you are in, in a ball game. You are in, and this, this is not as a, a ball room, but a ball game where balls are being thrown at you all the time, that this is probably one of the most difficult things that you have ever embarked on. And I will say the success rate of the ones I've been working with, not because I'm not doing my very best. I can always do better. Who cannot do better, right? This is the learning process for all of us. And, and I've got my flaws. I got my strengths. I got my weaknesses. And I can say, yes, I'm good at, at working with people, but I'm also impatient. And I'm also understanding that all of these processes that people need to go through, they are so complex that this is going to take a very, very long time. And in all of that time period, what would then be the best tool for these people to get to where they need to go to? And that's where I understood that talking to people over since 2007 and until 2000 and um, actually to this year, 2022, I've had these conversations with people. I had years on and off, especially between 18 and uh, 21, where things were really dark and heavy. I didn't have many talks there, but I then took it back up here in 2022 just to discover it's the same issues, it's the same challenges, it's the same things I'm saying, it's the same things they are saying, uh, even though it's different people. So we're dealing with the same set of challenges. And that's where I'm going in and, and looking at that's an issue. That's something that needs to be changed. What is the best way then? Okay. I've talked to so and so many people which have taught me what the issues are. I try to solve it by talking to people as a psychotherapist over so many years now can see that it's taking them so far, but it's still the same processes of understanding that they are not having. There are still the same blockages. There are still the same challenges. There are still the same understanding processes to 
get to that point where they see this reality because most people who are waking up now have not had that sight as a child as I had. They have not uh, grown up in chaotic homes. They they might have, but then they have done different types of defense mechanisms. So we say where if they have might have uh, psychological or psycho uh, um, energetic or clairvoyant uh, seeings as I have, they might have saved different things. But the question is, how have they dealt with this? Most have just kind of stuffed it away. And as I try to do, and you can say, well, I was not allowed to do that because the project I was part of, as you recall in the first podcast, where I talk about uh, in 1992 when I was woken up as well as again when I left my husband and I was almost on the, the brink of suicide because it was just it was just yeah that would have been a death sentence to remain there and then first doing one thing and then finding out that was the wrong one and then go back play a game and then get things sorted right and then take on the project of another living being while I was awakening myself and in that process, figuring out how do I do this the best way? How do I get this child to become the most perfect version of what she is? What is the project with her? What does she need? And at the same time, figure out who am I? What am I? How do I do this? What are my challenges? Why am I here? And all of these things that I was going through in the same process. So having a double process of really taking care of someone else while I was doing some really tough uh, inner psychological processes in my own awakening process and on the same time also understanding because she was enormously afraid of it that I had to shelf a lot of things and wait until she had left the nest and had become completed in her project then I could resume my own project and then knowing that and setting that aside even though I was so pissed about it and it was difficult for me it just had to be that way. Because those of you who've got children, you know, they can be very, very strong willed in if you are not doing uh, what they need. And in that you get this, if you are sensitive and if you are empathic and if you do have the understanding of the life forms, you can't just overlook that and say, yeah, fuck you. I'm going to go my own thing because you're going to destroy another living being. So you don't do that because you have given birth to it. It's your damn responsibility. So that's part of these processes as well. And some of you that are change makers, you have never got kids, but then you have had an animal where you've experienced a little bit of the same thing, where you are a caretaker for something else. And you understand that this is not about your needs. This is about you of taking on a responsibility for another life form. So, so that's, that's a good first, first step to understand that as change makers, we're not doing this for us. But we are doing it because we have a drive inside of us that tells us this is the right thing to do. And we will in our processes, psychological processes, if we're doing it right, we will go through all of these <clears throat> corners of our subconscious where we understand why we have that drive until we end up uh, with our original genetic composition architecture. And then we'll understand, yeah, we were also dealing with the timeline event and the, the, what happened after the timeline event and all of these projects that failed one by one, how the ones that were around us succumbed to the timeline event effects and onward and so forth. All of these challenges that just goes on and on and on and on. And in all of these processes, discovering the manipulation and how much you've been taken tailored and wept into false histories that are positioned there to put you into the rabbit hole so you don't get to the real story. So this is also, so what are we changing? As you're kind of saying, <laughs> what's the point then? What are we changing? Well, in a way you can say a whole change maker, the, the process of changing energy to get to the potentials where you can actually activate is probably what this is about. That's the highest goal of it. As in, we need people who are doing this work to activate and really get the understanding of what this world is about. That's probably the first step. Really see this world as it truly is. That's the, the social psychological part of it, where we really awaken. Not just seeing, oh yeah, there are predators out there and narcissists and, and evil people and, and human trafficking and all of these things. It's always been there. It's part of the colonizing races. That's what they do in their wells. So of course, it's here as well. 
and all of the perversion that's been engineered in so we can continue breeding, which of course have attracted different groups that want to experience the central nervous system kick off and the peripheral nervous system electrochemical rush that it gives. So it has become an industry. It's an industry for different groups of the scavengers. So therefore, they are also trading off inside this reality. So it's exemplified here. So you need to understand the whole spectrum of evil that we are dealing with, the spectrum of perversion we are dealing with here. It's not just humans. It's all the way to the top. The level of corruption is not just politicians within our reality. They are just the exemplifiers. It goes to the other realities as well. And it goes so far back that led to the colonization of our reality field. And that's where those of us who are have that resilience gene that has gone up to the frontal lobes. That's why we also need to look into our purpose all the time and say this purpose that we have, it has to transcend all of that. And then there's only one for me that that stands every single time. And that is to do the right thing as the first of many for the highest good of the many. That's the, on, that's the only thing that works for me. I've been through a lot of different uh, processes, a lot of different goals. And I work with a lot of different people, a lot of different extraterrestrials, a lot of different crossovers, a lot of different releasing, a lot of different, a lot of stuff on all levels of a reality. And it all comes down to that one in the end. What these groups that are here don't have is for the highest good of the many. They have for the greater good, but the greater good is your, your crack eggs to, to make an omelet. So you have casualties. But when you work with the highest good of the many, you are an exemplifier yourself. You work with yourself. You don't use others. That's the 12 choice of living. You don't use any other life form to achieve your goal for your lineage. That's the greater good. They use other life forms in their experimentation to achieve what they need to continue their survival. That's the greater good. But what we do for the highest good of the men is that we set an example and we become what we want to change in this reality. That's the highest good of the many. That's where we do all the work on our own, by our own means to begin with. And then via that enormous amount of complex transformational processes, our energy system will then hold as coding. We can then begin to change the reality field. So you understand that we change the reality field by becoming what the reality field should do. We become the master engineers of our reality field. And that's the, the, the higher order scientific technological part of it that I'm also teaching. So that's the goal. The psychological process is really just to wake you up and get you into the point where you mature and you get the resilience to do this work. So you can fight off all of the challenges and all of the obstacles, all of the prohibiting technologies and everything that's prohibiting you and uh, trying to get you away from that purpose of reconnecting correctly to the reality field. Because in the original worlds, the reality fields are a complete resembling or what we call a mirror of the life forms that live there. So that's also the understanding when we do this as change makers, it is not other people because other people must do what they must do. They are who they are and they can only do what they have got the means to do on their own devices. We can't give them something they don't have. We can't make them into something they are not. So it has to be there. This is, as I always say in the Gospels, the talents. You Either you have the talents for it or you don't. Either it's there or it's not. You're kind of born with it. It's kind of in your genetics. So not that we can't be changed, not that we can't transform this, and we've got a lot of stuff going on, but on the highest level of our existence will show us how far we can push this. But as I said, this is a, a pattern. So that means we have got many different functionalities, many different purposes, and many different forms of lineages. That's why there are 12 lineages where each and one of the groups had their own purpose. As I talked about with the avians that were in the beginning section of it, that were to develop into a new progressive reality structure that had not been seen before. So they had the capacity and the ability to create 
uh, a new type of light that would be able to create a new type of life force. They were engineered for that, but they were never, they were never put to the point where they could unfold all of their potentials. They only kind of got to the fourth uh, cycle. They were never pushed further into the higher levels and the higher um, functionalities of their DNA, of their original consciousness potentials. So you can say, well, for them to function, the world needs to be nice uh, because they don't work well in, in a hostile environment. They crumble in hostile environments. So they are put, as I said, into uh, areas, rural areas, or uh, they get into either they're put into nature where they can thrive and live, or they are put into glamour settings, which we're also seeing, where they, they become influencers, little bright beings, selling themselves off, prostituting their energies for the sake of more likes or what have you, and get addicted by that one, because they have unfortunate attendance to get addicted to certain forms of energy infusions because they are to process a specific type of happy energy. So they need the happy energy to continue to exist and they are then getting it from other people. But what they're not seeing because they can't see higher up, they're also getting other stuff that is slowly crumbling them and, and draining them and are burning them out. And they don't know why until they get taken over and consumed by something else and then they are typically um, taken over by a dark one at some point. So that's the, the, that's the downside of that one and then be, they become falling angelic so that's also part of that history even though we have falling angelics that are on a higher level of the hierarchy they're part of the Anunnaki superhuman projects but this is again that's kind of when the, some of the, the the dark ones have not got the ability to have physical forms so they they do what they can they target these little light beings and then eventually they consume them and take them over and then they have the form that they didn't have because it's the same type of genetics just to put that in context. So that's some of the challenges for them to understand that, yeah, I'm kind of have this addiction tendency and I want to be happy and I want all of this. So I'm going to, I'm looking for it in all the wrongful places because I'm using my physical form, my comfort zone and my, my more naive kind of psychological structure to get myself into trouble, to find communities where we're feeling happy and not seeing all of the, the, the spies and the dark ones that are typically in these communities, especially put there to target that group Group that they can uh, groom and then take over and get a physical form. So this is that's some of these challenges. And how do you tell these these little happy seekers that this is the world that they are part of? No, these are all my best buddies. This is my tribe. You can go in. You can say, yeah, yeah, that one, that one, that is your 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 best. I'm not going to say boyfriend. I'm just kind of saying, yeah, and right, just because you all these bad experiences with men, so that's why it's always the men. So let's do it the other way around because they're females that have that dark angelic structure. They're in female form, but they are controlled by a dark one and then you have that angelic uh, inserted kind of human with that type of avian happy genetics that are like a fairy floating around in life and that male with all of his blue-eyed blonde-haired naive beautiful kind of things he will fall for this dark hair or sometimes she's blonde haired but most of the time she has got the lunar features and he's just wow what a beautiful or whatever or she's perverted and he's drawn to that because that's exciting or whatever it is and they don't see that the, the moment they begin to merge fields and have sex and all this kind of things. Yeah, that's, that's the death sentence because now she has got to you. She, you have merged your field with hers because you had sex with her. People don't understand these things because they don't want to understand these things. So this is also part of the change maker. And that's part of the toolkit to understand when I talk about why it's not such a good idea to go out and have partnerships while you're doing this, because you are entering into a very, very complex reality where strategies is about takeover, energetic influencing, about energetic takeover, transformation of energy systems to sustain and uphold life forms that cannot have a physical form, a world of entities, a world of forces, a world of battle, a world of factions, a world of stuff where everything is fighting to survive. So, so that's the first step of the toolkit where we line up all of these uh, that's what we call the SWOT analysis. We're looking at our strengths. We're looking at our weaknesses. We're looking at our opportunities and we're looking at the threats, which I've just done here. Quick run through. If you want to go into deeper that one, you can do the skill set courses where I talk more about these different things. But the strengths are the strengths you have is the energy you have transformed yourself. 
And that's where I can go in and say, well, personally, because of all the things I've gone through and I transformed it, all the challenges, the program I have been engineered to participate in, not the original one, because that's gone, but Noah took me over, began some of these what we call superhuman or super soldier programs, trained me, threw me into the underworld, threw me in all sorts of these realities. And then they got tired of me because I didn't work the way that I should. And then I went to Australia, got taken over by their factions and yada, yada, blah, blah, all of that history, which I'm just saying now, because when I went through it, it was a living nightmare. The attempts on my life, the attempts of takeover, the attempts of what's been going on, the upgrading processes, the attacks, the energetic attacks, the pull-ins, the scanning, the buzzing, all of the things I've gone through. I'm still here. I'm still doing it. And I got through it and I cleared myself of it and I learned by it and I tried to find solutions every time. So that's where you can say this. I had the purpose that kept me going. And that was, I was already getting in touch with the progression work, although it changed tremendously uh, throughout the course of time. And to begin with, to be honest, I did have the purpose of, I want to change the world and I want to change people and I wanted to help people. I began there, but then I began to understand how difficult it is for people. And then I changed it into, okay, I might not be able to change individuals the way I would like. I've done that with people, talked with people, done my very best. So now I need to lift it into some kind of general course material where people will then get everything I would have said in the sessions are now part of my course material because this is what I say to people so so it's here now so now you got that so you can do it in your own pace because I haven't got the patience to wait for you to get your shit together and your ducks in a row and get over all of your comfort zone denial defense mechanism trauma or whatever that's for you to work with and how quickly you work with that depends on your, your genetics. Because if you're very, very slow, that means that either you are under so enormous amount of prohibited technologies or you've been around so long that you're so high level distortion energy that I don't want to work with you anyways, because then I will get the imprint of it and then I'll have to deal with the imprint and then it will spawn to life. And then I'll have to deal with my version of your shit because you still have your shit, but I'm dealing with the imprint of it because this what people carry sheds off, it shares imprints, and then it comes to life in those of us who have viable genetics because we are engineered to create life. You see, my mom is one of these aliens that was supposed to to kind of be a progenitor of a specific type of naive type of genetics, which is why she ended where she did. But I'm born out of that. So my system, my body will naturally respond and begin to, to engineer and create. And I was put with, uh, uh, living with, with another one in Australia who had that progenitor template and it amplified levels of my template that wasn't activated before. But because I was living with her uh, in her house in Australia, that's kind of where I was re-engineered into becoming something else, which were very, very unfortunate. So that's also where we are again, aside from we're having people around us that we care a lot about, but if they are part of a project where that is directly harmful to us, then, then these are the challenges. These are the choices we'll have to make eventually if we can't change it. If we can't go in and help them because they are what they are or they're dealing with what they're dealing with, they need to do it in their pace. And if they are doing it in their pace and we are being harmed by it because we have a different pace and we have a different project and a different purpose, then the only logical, rational thing is to say, well, then you'll have to go your way and I'll go my way and we might meet up again. I hope we'll meet up again. And next time we meet up, I hope you are where you will no longer influence me in a way that is not positive for my energy system. And I hope I will be in a way where my energy system will will affect you in a positive way as well. So that when we meet up in the future or wherever, we will be for the highest good of both. So that we will have an optimal exchange where both of us will grow in the manner that will lead to the highest purity rate, the highest standards and the highest progression rate. But for now, we are dragging each other down as two blinds that are trying to navigate through a churchyard. We will fall into the grave, both of us. That's a paraphrasing of a Danish saying, an idiom that says that two blinds lead each other to the grave. That's our version of it. 
So, so that's, that's just, that's just another cost that has to be engulfed and understood when we're doing this work. And it, it's, it harms. I'm, I'm missing these people because my heart is, they are originally of some of the lineages I used to work with and I'm missing these people every single day. But I can't be around them because they are deliberately engineered to so that those of us who are from the same lineages, when we do meet up, we will cancel each other out because they're re-engineered us to do so. Because if you have two of the same lineage that actually works together under the original pillar project, we would become a force of nature. We would become enormously strong. Then we would amplify each other to continued progression. So they have made sure that we are engineered in a way so that when we do meet each other, we will cancel each other out. Or even worse, begin to 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 uh, not only negate each other, but also uh, uh, create more energetic parasites or go in and, and literally uh, reverse our original amplification factors into amplification in an enormously negative way which I experienced when I was in Australia, where I met two of uh, two people that used to be part of my earlier projects. And we used to work together. And I was thrilled when I began working with them. But one had got amnesia completely, and the other one had got that kind of negative reversal amplification factor due to the, the projects that she had been uh, sucked into in her many lives here on the planet. So, so this, this, these are some of the issues that we are up against when we're doing this. And, and, and this, this is the cost of being a change maker, which you will also see with social entrepreneurs. They discover that doing that work is much, much more than just going in and, and do a little bit here and there and one year and then everything's good to go. They begin to understand this is a way of life. And that's the higher one of lifestyle. That's where the whole comes in. That's why we really begin to understand. Okay. We are in. We are in a war zone. We are in a system that is falling apart. It's been overused. It's overpopulated. We are doing damage control here. And we're seeing the same thing in reality now. What we will see with the climate issues, with the challenges that are coming ahead. And we are, this is, I'm now talking on November 13th. Uh, uh, um, 2022 and I am pretty sure and I'll probably put a podcast out at some point on the whole Changemaker News YouTube channel that the world leaders are no longer thinking we can solve this the world leaders are now shifting into damage control it's just a matter of time before that's the new policy that will be made and that is also where we go in as change makers, where we will then begin to understand that the dynamics of our world will now begin to change I'll talk about that in a podcast because this, this is, these are some of the things where we understand. Okay. What does that mean? And I said that for a long time. And that's why I'm just kind of, yes, just a matter of time before they are willingly going out and admitting it. Because why do they go to instead of trying to change the things that, because we, we reached that deadline last year. That was COP26. And that's why we had Greta Thunberg. Okay, I'm going to say it here. We had Greta Thunberg that were in as the one person rising up from being a street, uh, sitting on the street trying to get people to understand and then actually talking to the Pope and every single world leader being direct and saying, this is, these are the things. She's one of the hybrid kids as well. And that did not work at all. Not one damn thing. It was, it just became some kind of celebrity thing. Right. So, so that's how it works. So there you also begin to understand when we talk about all these complex structures, we have got people who are working for good and we have got a lot of people who are working for service to self. And as long as all these people are working for ill, literally compared to the reality field and what it needs, then, then we are in a whole other ball game where we understand, okay, this is not just about people of goodwill that want to change the world. Because if we were all of goodwill, then the world would definitely look different. But we have got a lot of different souls here. We've got a lot of different factions here. We've got a lot of different challenges. We've got a lot of different opinions of what's the right way to live and what people are entitled to. And we have got challenges with the Southern Hemisphere and poor countries and all sorts of things that are going to be very, very difficult to really change. So therefore, the next logical step is damage control. And we are also, we know that they are not saying it out loud, but they are saying it behind doors. Who can survive? What can survive? What's the triage here? 
the assessment dynamics are now completely different. That's part of the SWOT analysis as well. And that's why we go in and say, what are our strengths? And that's why I'm focusing so much on the social psychological structures and your energy work and your clearing work so that you will not be hit by all of the different reality factors that are going to play in now as well, which were not there before under the old world order. Under the old world order programs, the lunar gates were controlled, the underworld gates were controlled, the sun were in a specific setting. All of that has fallen apart. Now we're getting influx of things from the moon, we're getting influx of things from the underworld or the earlier cycles of our reality field. We are getting the the original density one radiation from the sun, which is kicking alive all of these density one gate systems, including changing our solar system into a density one solar system as part of the outskirts close to the abyss, which opens up gate systems to the abyss. And from that end on, it's just downhill. So now we understand that. So, so what we are doing here is the understanding, okay, we are still working to transform the reality because we are interlinked with it and we are connected that way. So that means those of us who are really activating our higher order potentials, we will experience more and more of that. And we will have days where we can do nothing but clearing work. And therefore, we also as change makers need to, to arrange ourselves in ways where we understand, yes, this is what we can do. This is what we're capable of doing. This is how far we can push it and what is most important right now. What is, what is needed mostly now? And how do we make that choice where we protect ourselves so much that what we want to put in, what project we embark on right now, is the one that demands most attention. And you will say, well, Randy, if we can't change the world, if we can't change people, if we can't change reality, and all of the things are going downhill, what's the purpose? Because it's the right thing to do. Because it's in your DNA, it's in your genetics. That's part of the issues we had after the timeline event. We are closing up a cycle here. We didn't get it the first time around. We'll probably not get it this time around either. But we are conditioned, we are coded, we are under the law of the cycles, we are under universal laws here. It's not about what we want to do, it's about what's the right thing to do and what's the right thing to do, that is to follow the universal laws. It's not because it's the law of God, but it's because it's the law of the universal structures and natural laws of energy. That these laws define this, the universal cycles and they define our energy system and it defines the engineering of our energy system and it defines the unfolding of our consciousness potentials. So unless we are working in sync with our reality field, with the universal cycles, with the original purpose of our energy system and the original purpose of our consciousness units and why we're even here to begin with, we are not doing what we're supposed to do and you will go against everything you are and you will demolish yourself. So if you can't do it for others, then at least understand if you are not following the original laws of everything, you want to lift up. That's what, how the dark ones kind of come to power because they, they in Atlantis, they figure out how to crack that code and create an energy system that could be serviced to self without deteriorating. But they, they had to let go of the physical form. So that's the, that's the price they paid. And now they understand with the dark energies coming and everything that's going on. Yeah, we still need physical forms. That's part of some of the military projects. That's some of the Atlantean projects where they, after 60,000, 5,000 years understood we need forms, military projects and some things that's going on now with the cubes and, and the, the, the quell air and all of these. Uh, cubes with Q, uh, Q U B E, not C U B E, but Q U B E that are part of the Atlantean cube um, technologies and the dark ones trying to get into physical form and some of the kids that have been born in this lifetime. Not going so well either, but because they, as they go into physical form, they are now connecting to the dark gates and the abyss and all these kind of things. So what they try to dodge, the bullet they try to dodge to begin with after the timeline event has now just caught up with them. And we're in the same mess. Everything is catching up. So, so there is for me as going from all of these different stages of why I'm doing this, it all comes down to because that's the right thing to do. There is no other way. 
And that's another toolkit that we then go in level-minded and clear-headed and strategically finding solutions. Because we know these are the laws of the universe we're part of. These are the laws of the energy system we're made of. This is the purpose of why we exist. This is why we're here without getting all uh, divinity screwed up because this is the purpose of God a kind of thing. But just completely level-headed understanding. Similarly, I said, you need to poop. If you don't poop, you get constipated. And if you get constipated, you begin to break down your body. And eventually your organs will collapse and you will die. Similarly, when we work with energy. There are just some very, very clear, straight rules of our existence, which is also why when we talk about the different groups that have been here, why they have failed, because they have come in with their laws and their realities, although they created artificial ones. Eventually, they have got to the point where either you go in and you become part of this reality field because you have worked here so long, you have aligned yourself to such a degree, or you leave and go back so you can get recalibrated in your own system. And that's the five-year cycles I'm talking about, where groups are, are doing what they can, they begin to align, then they take off because other, otherwise they'll have to integrate. And if they don't, they'll have to take out, go back, align themselves with their original system, come back, build new realities, and then begin all over with the projects in on a different nodal point. Because if they go back and use the, the prior nodal point, they will just align with everything they were and become that again quickly as in uh, because they already got the code systems for it from the last time around. So that's also the whole why they're leaving and coming back and going and coming back. And we need to understand that as well. Okay, we now got five years from that group before they come back. When they come back, they will do it on another timeline, on another code streams with other re um, um, repetition cycles, working as concentric circles in a new neural point where they will begin from, from the core and influence more and more and more until they take over and create their pattern of change from where they will operate at certain points of time where they will create havoc inside our reality to attain, to attain and retain what they want to get here. Then they'll have to leave, but they will come back a later point. And then they will have destroyed that nodal point of our reality field. And then that will be imbued with the remnants, the shells, the ghosts, whatever, which are some of the things that are creating energetic parasites in our reality fields and elementals, because all of that distortion is still there. And we will work through that uh, in our clearing work. And as we work through the debris of their projects, we will get all of the attachments and all the energetic influences of all of that distortion they have created. Because those of us who are part of the original lineages, we are connected to all of the reality field. That's fucking annoying, to be honest. Some of the things I'm dealing with when I'm in contact with people of the fourth cycle, they have all of these imprints from all of these failed colonizing projects. And I'm just so fed up with them because there's no, it's just parasites. It's nothing but elementals and parasites and old cubes and distortion energies and shells and clones that are just left behind and what have you. Just kind of, it would be nice if people could clear that out on their own because it's actually quite simple. Because there's nothing there to uphold it anymore. Get the cube, you get that section. But the reason why the cube can recreate itself is because there's always some person out there on this planet who has not cleared their version of it. And as long as it was just one human is connected to these projects, then it will continue because you've got the cedar inside this reality. Yes, and it, it doesn't matter if these people, these vessels uh, cease to exist and die because the energy system is still there. It's just being recirculated. So it goes again and again. It's part of the karma, if you like. It's part of the subconscious. So it would be so nice if people at least could get to that point when we talk about the fourth cycle. But since we also know that they are not, well, then that's part of our damage control. Then that's part of that. What do we then need to do? How do we then need to do that? And what is the purpose of what we're doing? And what should our be our specific level where we want to focus our attention, knowing all of these difficulties and we know we can't solve, solve it all. It's damage control, it's triage, which project is most important. And the first one is the Project Blue Flower, where you learn to control your base program. You learn to live your life to what you need to be able to do so you can do whatever project you embark on. And then you need to find your strength and what you have transformed and what you're capable of and where you can see you can make a difference from your influential sphere. 
And then you begin to educate yourself either via formal education, which can take years, supplemented with, for instance, Coursera, which you can do in one day if you like, if you're a quick learner. And if you're a slow learner, then you need to upgrade yourself to become a quick learner. Finding out how do you process information? How do you learn learning? How do you uh, work with the information you attain? How do you put it into effect? How do you transform something you have learned into actually being a tool you can use? That's the toolkit as well. And then you go and say, what are the, what are the opportunities here? How far can I push it? And what are the threats? And these are some of the things we'll look more into in the toolkit uh, course material I'm here making, where we're going more into the details of, okay, what is our toolkit? Now we, we talked about the psychological issues. We talked about the energies. We talked about the fuck up of our reality field. We talk about the skill sets. We talk about the psychological structure. We talk about this probably won't lead to anything, but it's the right thing to do. So we kind of covered all the basis of why we're doing it. We're still doing it, but now with more level headed, clear leveled, understanding of this is not going to be easy. So we're not doing it because we're expecting everything will be good and fine because you'll just be disappointed. We're doing this because it's the right thing to do and because we are under the laws of the universal cycles and because we're cleaning up our own mess and because we are completing our existence within this reality field so that if we succeed, we will move on. If we fail, we'll go down with the ship, but then we truly deserve it because we've done everything in our power to try and change us reality and the unit under the laws of the universal cycles. We've done what was in our power to do. So we've done what we could. And at least we'll go down with honor then. So we'll still do it because at the end of the day, and I can say that here in my mid fifties, where most of you are young and you have not reached that point yet. And you think the whole world is full of opportunities. You will tick off the boxes of, yeah, that was that opportunity that would didn't play out. Yeah. That dream. Bye bye dream. Yeah. That idea. Bye bye idea. You'll just get more and more clear head and more and more see things as they truly are. And the resilience part comes if we can still go on even though we are now becoming enormously clear headed and cynical and understanding that everything in this world do not allow us to do so, but we'll still do it because the, the alternative is unthinkable. I've been there. I was there when I was young. Remember the suicidal tendencies? And I pulled myself up and said, no, if I can pull myself to that point, I have the power to pull myself the other direction. So these are some of the psychological dynamics you need of resilience that is part of you. It cannot really be taught. You can, you can learn the dynamics of it, but if you don't have it as a natural feature in your architecture, as we talked about the avians that are happy seekers, because they've not developed it far enough, then it's, it's, there are certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. And that's also a realization of how far you can push it. And not trying to inflate yourself with saying, yeah, we have the same story. So therefore we have the same capacities because that's not the case. Depends on what kind of project you've been under. And all humans on this planet technically share some level of the identical life stories at some point. But look at where we are. Look at where we're born. Look at where, what projects you're under. The realization of who and what you are to the depth of your existence and your architecture and your consciousness potentials and your original story will define what you can do. And once you know what you can do, then you can really begin the transformational processes because then you will, if you are one of these avians, you will then understand why you're doing what you're doing. And then you understand, I got a lot to learn. Okay, how do I learn it? How do I transform this into from being this naive, happy seeker into being the one that I can actually fight off that dark one that is lurking in the corner trying to possess me? How do I get equipped to deal with that? And that's a tough learning process because that's where you begin battling with that dark thing as I set the thing beside my bed because I was on my mom who did not fight off her whatever she was connected to. And it consumed her in the end. So with that understanding, I've here allowed, laid the foundation of the course. So when I do talk about the toolkits, keep in mind, this is not just something you study and then you got it. 
This is about your personality structure, but I'm highlighting some of the tools that some of you have, some of you haven't, some of you have to learn them, some of you just have to remember them. At the end of the day, we're just doing this because it's the right thing to do because we are under the laws of our lineages and the universal cycles. And that's enough for us. And if it then leads to change in the world, if it then leads to change in other people around us, that goes for the highest good of the many. Good, because we have chosen to be the first of many to get back on track, to do what none have done before us, to conquer the effects of the timeline event, to do what should have been done ages ago. And in that understanding, learning from all of the mistakes that everybody else have done, and take all of that knowledge and then begin to do it as it was supposed to be done a very long time ago. Because that's who we are. That's why we're here. And that's why we took part of the universal cycles to begin with. So let's get back on track. Thank you.